Now, in this video, we will start with the constructors. Basically, constructors are defined with the same name as that of the class as a class member, which are a special kind of methods, as we have already seen the methods which get executed whenever you invoke it explicitly. But by the time I am discussing the constructor, it will be invoked implicitly any time when you will create the instance of a particular class. So whenever these classes so whenever these instances are created and the constructors are called, they actually initialize the data members available inside a class. Depending on like how you want to initialize a particular value, you can define the multiple constructors in the same class which will initialize the values in different ways. Like here, you can see like default constructor, parameterized constructor, copy constructor and static constructor are the different types of constructors that we can have inside a class all together as well. Alright, so let's go practically and see how we can implement these constructors in real life. So again, I'll give a look to the same example which we have done in the previous videos as well. Here, what I have done is, I have just initialized the instance of the test class and after that I just call this calculate percent method. But I have not assigned anything to this marks. So when I will execute this, you will find that percentage is zero. But to get the zero percentage, it is essential to get zero in your marks. So whenever I will put a breakpoint here, you will find like whether I have assigned anything or not, but this marks is initialized with a zero. Question arises from where it comes. So the answer is from this constructor, which is provided by the dotted framework internally. Constructor is nothing but a special method which initializes the instance variable to a particular value. In case of default constructor, it will initialize with the default value and for value type the default value is zero. If you want to change the default value to something else, you can define your own constructor which you will have to put the same name as that of the class and now here you can put like this dot marks is equal to let's say 30. So now I have just changed the default value of my marks from zero to 30 using my own default constructor. So as soon as I will execute it, you will find the percentage is now 60 even though I have not assigned anything right here. So let's see how the execution will look like now. So obviously the execution will begin from this main method and as soon as this test constructor will get called, the next control will be in this test constructor which will initialize the marks for T1 to 30. And then when you will call the percentage, marks will be having 30 which is assigned by the default constructor and on that particular basis the, con the percentage will be calculated. But if you want to initialize the marks with a particular value every time from a constructor, you can pass the parameterized constructor as well like this. So here as you can see, whenever this constructor will be called, you will have to pass the marks that will be of integer type and the same value will be assigned to this marks which is there for the class member. So let's try this as well. So t, let's create a new instance t2 is equal to new test and here I have two options. One is calling the default constructor and another one is calling this parameterized constructor. So let's pass 35 in this and when I'll call the percentage method for t2, I will get 70%. Dot .NET Framework gives you a default constructor by default. But if you have created any other constructor like parameterized constructor and you don't create the default constructor, so in that particular scenario, Dot .NET Framework is not going to provide you the default constructor. It will only be provided when you don't have any constructor in your class. So you will have to define this default constructor right here. And let's move on to the next constructor type that is the copy constructor. As the name says copy constructor, it will copy the value of one instance to the another. And it is nothing but just a parameterized constructor which will take the parameter of the class type. So what I'll do here, this dot marks is equal to t dot marks. And when I will 
try to call this what I'll have to do t3 is equal to new test and here I'll pass t2 as the instance so this t2 will be copied to this t and its marks will be copied to this dot marks this means now this is t3 because t3 is the object because of which this constructor is being called so now if I'll call the calculate percent for the t3 you will find like the percentage for the t2 and t3 are same that is 70 let's take one more scenario for this I am commenting the previous lines here what I can do like I have created the instance let's say t4 is equal to new test and here I will assign any particular value let's say 45 for t4 rather than using copy constructor what can I do is I can directly assign the value of t4 into this t5 but the difference is since the object of a class is reference type so if you will change the value of t4 that is the value of marks in t4 it will also change it for t5 so for example currently I have assigned the marks as 45 for t4 that will give you 90 percent that is 45 out of 50 but later if I will say t4 dot marks is equal to 48 if I will call t5 dot calculate percent then you will see t5 is 96 percent that is 48 out of 50 I have not changed the value in t5 but since I have changed it for t4 and both are carrying the same value but in case of copy constructor once the value is copied both are having their own memory because you are giving a new space for both the instance but in that particular case for t5 you have not assigned any new memory because new keyword was not specified now for initializing the non-static members that is the instance members we have defined three different types of constructors that is the default constructor parameterized constructor and copy constructor but what about the static members since as I said in the previous video static members will be in the memory before any instance will have so obviously it will not be a good idea to initialize the static member inside these constructor so for static member I can have a separate constructor called static constructor inside which I can initialize test dot max marks is equal to 50 because assigning a value will be better inside a constructor so I can have this static constructor for the static members whenever you will define a static construct of a particular class inside a class it will always be executed before the main method so that is for sure like before this main method will be invoked this static constructor has executed and has initialized the max marks with 50 so this is how you can start using the different types of constructor 